My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning or this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Okay, no problem. Hi, everybody. My name is Brittany Blackwell. I'm based in London, which is why I said good afternoon. Um, I am the founder of I Am Soul Media Group, as well as a nonprofit. Um, it's a 501c3 nonprofit I have as well called Moguls Worldwide Incorporated, uh, which stands for More Gals Attaining Leadership Status. Um, and I'm doing my doctoral program here at the moment, which is why I'm in this country. But I'm just so honored to be here with you today, Vahi. Thank you so much for the invite. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Do we need more female power? You don't think we like have enough already? And you want to help more? More? <laughs> Come on, we have enough already. Like every, no, like every no. other account on Instagram is a female power empowerment. You guys are helping each other. We need more men. I need to do a call out on my Instagram and just get a bunch of men oh together. We need like men empowerment. It doesn't sound easy, but. <laughs> What we need men to help support women to attain more leadership positions. I think right now a lot of the the you know the thinking around women and inclusion and leadership, um, well actually in the workspace has been more so getting women into certain positions into certain sectors, especially the STEM sector, for example. Um, I know in the UK there's probably about 25% of the workforce that only is represented by females in the STEM sector. So there's a lot, you know, more that needs to be done to really help achieve gender parity. Um, but even beyond that, I'm looking at leadership because that really influences the work culture um, and also it creates a more inclusive thing because diversity is a given. We all know we're all very diverse, but as far as the inclusion factor, there's still so much more to be done, which is exactly why I founded the nonprofit to help different companies and work with their HR departments and their diversity and inclusion departments uh, to try to get things in place, um, you know, specific programs that I curate specific to their needs um, in place to help them achieve that. All right. So let, let, let's yeah. go back and forth and let's debate it a little bit. I'm, I'm okay. ready. I think okay. I've had my coffee this morning. So is it up to us to help other female empower themselves or is it up to them to build up the skills, the, you know, the necessary tools for mm -hmm. them to be able to handle the roles? So it's not necessarily the companies don't want to do it. I'm looking yeah. at it from the opposite side. I'm mm -hmm. like, if you want to be empowered, you should start by self-development. What Absolutely. do you think of that idea? I, I believe in both things. I, I think you make great points for both um, angles. It's important for people to have the access to be able to be equipped with certain skill sets and, you know, things to be able to navigate certain environments um, in certain positions. Um, that has been severely lacking. Um, in order to help address that, my nonprofit is intergenerational. I'm also trying to focus on helping young women start to think ahead about wanting to think about leadership and going towards those positions. Because a lot of times, I think what really uh, dissuades some girls is like the language that's used around, oh, you're very bossy, or, you know, it's just, it's always like a negative connotation. But if it's a guy um, who does it typically, it's always like, oh, that's an example of a leader, or you know how to, you know, take control. Um, girls aren't necessarily, especially in the society, Western society, I'll say that we live in today, they're not nurtured in the same way um, for those things to be encouraged uh, to come forth. So definitely my nonprofit is going to focus on helping girls to think along those lines, but also to equip them with the skill set and the di different type of experiences, work experience, internships, whatever the case may be, or being paired with a mentor in order to address that gap so that they have the soft skills and the technical skills, the hard skills as well to prepare them for these um, types of positions. Yeah, mm -hmm. that guy who's bossy, somebody else, his wife bosses him at home. So it's okay, don't worry. It's oh. a, there's definitely a balance going on there. You, I, I assume that that is what's going on, okay? Yeah. So you, you shouldn't worry about that. But no, I see, I mean, it is a valid point and I understand that. I mean, but think about it. Wouldn't you say that this is new to everybody? I don't want to say, I, I also don't want to create the culture of entitlement that just because I'm female and I'm part of this company, I should be given these things or handed these things. You know, obviously, that. you know, the way it's been, it's been a male role, totally fine. But mm. aren't we like really new territory? Because this has been going on for the past 20, 30 years. Back in the days when my mom and my dad grew up, husbands were outside, female were inside, they had their own roles, 
And that's what it was. The way economy was that uh, one person could work and the family could survive off of that one person's, you know, income. Same mm-hmm. thing with Wes. You know, it used to be that husband worked and it was enough. But now I think because of the inflation and different reasons in our society and us wanting to get more stuff, more this, more that, or move into better stuff, now we need the husband and the wife to work mm-hmm. and bring in the income. So now it's very new territory. So you could get it right or you could get it wrong because it's uncharted. We don't know. Well, what are you saying is uncharted specifically, if you don't mind elaborating on that point? Well, when we talk about like, you know, STEM, 25% are female. Well, my question is this. What if the females want to get pregnant? Wouldn't you say if they're in a leadership role, maybe they're going to think about having the second baby or third baby. Maybe they can't do it. Maybe physically it won't be possible for them to take care of the household and be able to be in a room. Like, do they, are we putting them in a position to choose? I think everyone should have the a position to choose for themselves what they want. Not every woman, um, you know, wants to have a family life. And some who do have family lives also want the career as well. And there are plenty of women who are very, very capable of doing that and balancing both having a career, having family or having a career, enjoying singlehood, whatever the case may be. Um, I think we're perhaps, you know, the culture, there's differences within subcultures, for sure, within society. Um, But I believe that that doesn't have any um, hindrance on what women, you know, having the agency over themselves, they don't need somebody to dictate to them what they should or shouldn't do just because they are women. You know, it's almost kind of the question you asked about, like, this whole entitlement thing, that being the assumption, it kind of makes me want to ask you, as far as men being in these positions, is your thinking that they're entitled to be in those positions? My my opinion is, I don't care if they're male or female. Mm-hmm. If they if there is a role that needs to be filled, to mm-hmm. me, it's always good to have choices. Now, mm-hmm. I understand also too that some positions, because of the way they're at, let, let's just put it this way for a second. Would you say? Uh, 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 a submarine, let's say we've got military, Navy, right? Would you say all of these soldiers, Marines, all of these people will respect a female superior the same way that they would do a male superior? Now, that's the first question. Second question is, will that help them do their job? Or would that, yes, we could have a female, but that may not be able to have them do their role better so to me it's like i think we should caution like we shouldn't say oh just because one sector has 25 percent females we should definitely go and add more females because of the percentage it could be that it is necessary but look at daycares i would argue with that 90 percent of the daycare centers that i see are ran by females i don't go around saying that you know what daycares only 10 percent are male we should get more males in daycare I wouldn't agree with that. I think it should be a female role. I think a, a, a woman could probably nourish and, and, and do better at that role. So to me, it's like, it shouldn't just be a blanket just because the percentage is low. We should get it in there. And nobody should be entitled to anything. You should work No one it. ever said that. No one Simple. ever said that. But, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But mm-hmm. that's, where, that's where I like. To me, it's like, it should be open to everybody, putting your application. Now, I believe the people in charge of making those decisions need to be educated. So they don't go based on what their previous replacement had done. So if I'm a new CEO, I shouldn't look back and see what the other CEO had done in the past 10, 15 years and kind of want to you know, continue the same trend. As a leader, I should find out who's going to do good in this position as a totality, not just the percentage ones. Do you know, not think that women are not equipped to perform the same job or even better in certain roles? Is the assumption that they can't perform as well as men, is that the point you're coming from? I just want to ask that. Is yes an and no. Yes okay. and no. Because I think when they're growing okay. up, if a female knows that they're going to go into a leadership role, I think the set of classes, mentorship, and, and, and guidance that they will get is completely different. So I think at a young age, they should be 
talked to and discussed that, hey, you do have this option, but if you're going to go this route, you're going to need these certain skills that you need to acquire. I think a lot of times they may not, they might just dismiss it and not get the skills that's necessary for those positions. And then they might want to choose it at a later date. But that discussion, I think, should happen at a young age because maybe it's not being happening right now. Maybe they don't think that they could be a CEO, so they don't go study the leadership skills. You do understand that there are plenty of women who are CEOs and are running major corporations and Fortune 500 companies and, and I things agree of with that, that sort. So what, what you're describing, it kind of sounds like maybe, um, maybe it's due to the developmental environment that some people that you may have seen have been growing up in. But in the present moment that we're living in, um, you know, a lot of companies have made it their mission to really help achieve gender parity. It's not diversity and inclusion um, and equality are all important, you know, especially because diversity of thought really can even maximize profits for corporations. Mm -hmm. We all know how beneficial diversity of thought can be. And we need to hear perspectives from men. We need to hear perspectives from women. We need to hear perspectives from non-binaries, whatever you want, you know, so on and so forth, how people choose to describe themselves. But it's important to not make the assumption that they're not equipped or able to, you know, meet the standards of men being in these positions because a lot of the time sometimes nepotism plays a part where men get into certain positions um sometimes it's favored just for you being male not you specifically i'm speaking more in general um but there's a lot of assumptions of men being just generally more capable at certain jobs because they happen to be born male and i think that's very limited and we do ourselves a very very great disservice when we close out and think oh because i see you as a woman I feel like you're not going to be as equipped or you're not going to have the, the skill set to be able to handle, you know, the roles and, and the tasks and the job responsibilities that come with this role. That's a very erroneous approach, I believe. Um, and we need to encourage for more people to go into certain positions, like even especially the science field. It's not even... I've learned that in the work that I've done and the clients that I have had, especially in the past and working with people of all disadvantaged backgrounds, but specifically the young girls, one young girl said to me who was in a STEM program, she said she didn't even know that these fields were an opportunity to work in. And Which she didn't exactly know it. Let me, so on, how do we on, bring your awareness? Wait, let me finish. She, you, well, you know what exposed her to it? It may not have been her own family and the environment, the limit. I think we lost you. Brittany, I think we lost you. I think we're back. Oh, I think yeah, we went go over ahead, go ahead, continue. We're you're back now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the movie Hidden Figures, I'm not sure if you um, know what the, the movie is about. It's about these three women, uh, mathematicians, Katherine Johnson, she worked with NASA. Uh, she recently passed away, actually earlier this year. Um, but she had you know, they had done a movie uh, to show how she helped with the mathematical like equations to help this man get to the moon. It was a woman who did that. And it was during a time where women were not- I love that movie. That was an amazing movie. I watched it twice. <laughs> I love I watched movie. it twice. Yeah, it was very powerful. But you know what was my favorite scene? My favorite scene was the guy removing the bathroom sign. Mm -hmm. he, he dragged it at the end because mm -hmm. he didn't know that she was going to the bathroom that far. So mm -hmm. he removed the entire sign and he was dragging it through. I love that. That was like the yes. best thing. And that like, shows allyship. Cool. That shows allyship. You know, him like taking that down because it's nonsense. These biases and these prejudices and the assumptions that are made just because of the gender or the sex that we're born as, I feel like it really just does us such a great disservice. Katherine Johnson was such a brilliant, a brilliant mathematician. And I feel that when that young girl had told me, that's what inspired her to even look at STEM subjects and to know that that career is a possibility, that exposure is what let her know that it was possible because you cannot be what you cannot see. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so how, do we, think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do we get, let's just say, for example, I'm a yeah. young girl, I'm yeah. 18, 19 years old. Okay. What should the parents or whoever is watching this 
or -hmm. people that maybe they'll have somebody in their family. Mm -hmm. Maybe the mom and dad are too busy trying to provide, or maybe they frankly don't know themselves. Right. So we shouldn't penalize the new generation because their parents didn't know. So right. what are the couple of steps that individuals can take to bring that awareness for okay. that young girl? Right. So what I would say, um, and I'll speak from personal experience, I was very fortunate to grow up with an active parent, but I will say the thing that really changed the trajectory of my family and introducing me to fields that are more technical and learning different things and having more opportunities was um, there was an academic enrichment program that I participated in. Um, I was probably 11 or 12 when I first applied. Um, and it's called New Jersey Seeds, um, a wonderful organization. It helps families from, you know, different uh, types of diverse backgrounds, uh, disadvantaged backgrounds um, for academically performing, you know, academically astute uh, performing children. Um, so that program opened so many doors for my family. My brother also benefited from it. I benefited from it. And as a result of doing that, I was able to go to a college preparatory school on scholarship, academic scholarship. And because of that, I was able to um, get access uh, to different opportunities that I wouldn't have gotten in another environment. And uh, these two women who were working for a diversity work-life program, uh, Dion and uh, Jacqueline um, at Morgan Stanley, they were interviewing students uh, from minority and disadvantaged backgrounds who were at these preparatory schools. Um, and as a result, that's what gave me my first entry to working a paid internship at Morgan Stanley at the age of 15 in New York City. Things like that, programs like that can change the entire trajectory of a family's life, especially for girls. There's plenty of different, you know, nonprofit organizations that are really helping to cultivate the leadership skills. Girl Scouts is a great organization as well. Um, you know, the Girls Inc. Um, there's just so many uh, that I, I, I can't even, Girls Who Code. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Girls Who Code is right. a big organization. Right. There's so many um, people and leaders who are paying attention to the need for, we need to pay attention and, and bring out this talent and introduce them to, you know, having the proper mentorship and getting the right structures in place to help prepare these young girls who may want to aspire into these positions of leadership, even if they don't want to do leadership. It's just a good skill to have because leadership isn't always a title, you know, um, but it's, it, it takes that like being able to seek thank goodness we live in the internet age because you can look up something with a quick google search you know if you're interested in something and you want to do a, a program or if you want to do um you know some work experience there are plenty of employers who enjoy receiving emails from young people who are interested in saying hey i would like to learn more about this could i shadow you know somebody in your company to learn more about this because i think i want to go into it but i still want to figure it out and see, you know, if it's a good fit. There's I think you should do a training on that. I think there yeah. should be an IGTV just yeah. literally on how to approach and how right. to offer your time yeah. and, and, and do it in a, I mean, because there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a whole way of doing it. You can't just mm -hmm. hit up the person and say, I want to shadow you. They yeah. might be busy. Yeah. They might got stuff going on. And there's a lot of liability, responsibility, a lot That's of true. different things that they might actually need to put it together for mm -hmm. that to happen. So you got to allow the company time. But I think approaching it like that should be a training. Yeah, it should. It should. And just girls, you know, you know, being proactive. I think we have a lot of ambitious girls. Um, and I'm so proud of that type of uh, that spirit that, you know, a lot of these young girls that I've seen and been exposed to as a result of the different clients I work with for the different initiatives they had. It really enlivens me and it gives me a sense of purpose because I really want to make an impact and really just change what has become the norm. You know, the norm of there not being gender parity in leadership or it could be age parity. It can be, you know, differently abled parity. There's so many different things um, on the diversity spectrum. And I think the more we work towards creating an inclusive force without making, you know, one person wrong, because I don't, I also want to make it clear that I'm very much against um, polarizing. So I don't look at men, you know, speaking in general, uh, who are in these positions, as the enemy necessarily. Now, if you're doing things deliberately to block people because of your own biases, then we have a problem. 
but <laughs> if you're in that position, but you know you are in a position to empower the next person, whether that be a differently abled person, a girl, a woman, um, non-binary, whoever it is, you use that power to help empower others so that we can change what the face of leadership looks like so we can hear everybody's thought. We can truly celebrate the diversity of thought because I think it, it also increases profit, profit maximization. It increases, um, enhances employee morale. Um, and everyone wants to feel a part of and connected in that sense of belonging in the workplace. Most of our time is spent at work uh, well with this coronavirus here now. It's a little different. We're adjusting but you know, these are all very important things to help make for a better uh, work culture, for sure. I agree with that 100%. So yeah. what recommendation do you have for young entrepreneurs? What are a couple of steps that we need to be taking to be able yeah. to achieve that? Because I don't know, it might be just me, but mm -hmm. when I look at all these big companies, yeah. such as Udemy, Mind Valley looking at a lot of these places that are learning platforms and knowledge-based platforms, mm -hmm. I'm seeing more female than male coaches and trainers and instructors. Mm -hmm. Now, that could just, I'm, I'm only looking at a small segment, but doing that, I would say, if I had to guess and put a percentage on it, I would say 60 to 70% are female. I'm seeing in fitness, predominantly female. In yoga, I see that. In, mm -hmm. in mindset training, I see that. Mm -hmm. In goal setting, I see that. Mm -hmm. In graphic design, I see that. Mm -hmm. There are some sectors that I see predominantly male, but if you put it in totality, I'm mm -hmm. seeing a lot more females that I see more male, especially mm -hmm. with Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and social media. I see a lot more of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean we have enough. Mm -hmm. You could have more. Why not? Mm -hmm. So what are some of the recommendations for young entrepreneurs watching them and mm -hmm. wanting to potentially one day be like them? What are some of the steps that they need to be taking today? To be like the people who are instructing those courses exactly. on those videos? Well, I would say delve into the material that they are teaching. Look at how they are mapping out their course structure, the planning of it. How do they um, cover each module and do assessments, things like that. I would just study it front and back and absorb the material. I, I feel like it's a bit unfair to assume that people can afford uh, some of these platforms because I know there's a cost to it. But if you are really hungry, I just hope that they feel empowered to be able to ask family members like, hey, for my birthday, can you each contribute $5 so that I can invest in getting this course because I really want to learn more about this subject. This and most of, them have, and like, most of them have discounted for students. And I'm pretty yes. sure if you write an email to the company yes. describing yes. your situation, yes. like, I don't that see any so problem. True. That is very yes. easy. If yes. you reach yes. out to Mind Valley, say, listen, you guys got this yes. course. I've done yeah. these other three. This is the yeah. fourth one. What What are my options? Once you, I don't think there should be any problem there. But yeah. it, it, it does take an effort. Yes, it does. It you got to put it in effort. The initiative has to be there. Um, fortunately, there are programs that can help people from backgrounds who don't have access to the things we are fortunate to have access to and i'm so grateful for those organizations and you know just the work that they continue to do to help uplift and to help you know with equity because it's not just about equality we can talk about equality all we want but not everybody is starting with the same set of circumstances we're all coming from different pathways from different journeys um so it's not going to look the same and so keeping that in mind i'm very grateful for those types of organizations but I, I hope that the children um, and, and young entrepreneurs, not even just children, I'm sorry, you're asking about <laughs> young entrepreneurs specifically. No, I mean, they're, they're, they're young yeah. and they've got that drive yeah. that they want to do something. I think all of us have a little bit of an entrepreneur. If you ever wanted to go into yeah. a career, that, yeah. that, I mean, that's the definition of an entrepreneur. You, yeah. want more for, you want more out of your life. Like, exactly. To me, that's like entrepreneurship. Exactly. It, we connect entrepreneurship a lot of times with the income that's where the confusion comes in. So, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, just talking about the equality, yeah. you know, that you mentioned, my wife was the first Persian Muslim girl that was president of her class in Pepperdine wow. Law. That's that was awesome. the first time 
yeah. the school of Christ made a Muslim girl prisoner. Wow. So that was like a big deal right there. And I mm -hmm. think it was like four years ago, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, they just had their first Muslim um, instructor and, mm -hmm. and professor. It was like right. their first time. So uh -huh, uh -huh, it's uh -huh. happening more. And yeah. we're talking about religious views. We're not talking about white, black, pink, mm -hmm. male, female. We're Free. talking about religious yeah. views. Religious, yep. Mm -hmm. So they just barely got that. And I know, and, and my wife is a big fan of the guy. Uh, he yeah. writes a lot of good stuff, good materials. Yeah. I don't watch it all the time. I just mind my own business. I'm not like it's cool to do. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was not easy for him to accomplish that. So I yeah. respect that a lot. And, I'm a, and he doesn't even know. I'm not like, Dude, that's cool. I respect that. You know, yeah. you actually went and did it. So mm -hmm. you're the first, but I don't look at it as first. I look at it mm -hmm. now. You just opened up the door for everybody mm -hmm. else to see it is possible. I yeah. can do it. So my yeah. religious views are not going to come in play when I want to go apply to become a professor at Pepperdine Law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that definitely is changing too. I see that a lot happening. But we could always use more. I mean, you know, yeah, it should yeah, be a yeah, game sure. that you don't have to even discuss it because it's the norm. What happened? It should come to a day where we don't even have to discuss it. Like right. this conversation would be obsolete. They're like, right. what are you talking about? Right. Like, I haven't said that. I hope. I hope that this position isn't needed. I hope that what I'm doing will not have to be needed in the future. I want things to systemically like change and also public opinion to change because that even if institutions you know, create changes within to change certain cultures and attitudes and behaviors. It's not always the case that society will keep up with what, you know, individual nuclear work cultures create, you know, so it's kind of, it, it's a, a multifaceted job. Everything is interconnected. So when we get to that day, whew, I'll be happy. <laughs> but until then, we are on the ground working to empower people and to at least give them the same access to opportunities afforded to others um, so that everyone has equal footing um, and keeping in mind the, the diverse backgrounds that they come from as well. So yeah, for sure. I think, I think the only reason as a country, as a nation, will mm -hmm. be successful mm -hmm. is to have diversity. Exactly. Th that to me is like, that's like the ingredient right there because yeah. without that, you're leaving so much on the table that yep. it doesn't even make sense. Why not? Why right. shouldn't you? So right. to me, it's like your success is going to come from that. And if you look at every company, diversity right. comes in there and, and you brought it up that, you know, you got to get other views. A lot of times mm -hmm. I run a lot of the things by the people that are around me that are especially mm -hmm. female because mm -hmm. I know what I do. I bring in my own taste, but mm -hmm. it might be more on one side. And then when yeah. I get their opinions, I'm all like, I never thought about that. That's cool. Yeah. That'd be, oh, change this. And then sometimes they agree. They're like, no, this is very cool. I like it. So yeah. to me, it's like, you got to get that feedback to know what exactly. trajectory you're on. How yeah. could you, I mean, you don't even drive, you don't drive your car and just hold on to a steering wheel in one position and just continue going. You're going to mm -hmm. crash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, is, there are that little adjustments that you do. And why not yeah. do other people in it? <laughs> yeah. Definitely, you know, definitely. you just it, it just it just makes sense to me. Like yeah. you know, that 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 to me is like the the greatest one. Mm -hmm. So, when is your book coming out? What what's up? Have you done any book? How could they find you? What's up? <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, the book will come after I finish my doctoral program. I'm doing an eye psychology doctoral program at the moment. Um, but yeah, for sure, after that, I would like to work on one then. But people can, in the meantime, find me um, at Brittany Blackwell. That's B R I T T A N Y. B L A C K W E L L dot C O. Um, that's the website. Um, if you want to learn about my companies, there's actually tags on my website. So it's just easy to access that information. Um, if you'd like to follow my Instagram page, all social media um, is Dr. Brittany B, D R B R I T T A N Y N B. And I did want to make a special note, if you don't mind. Go ahead, I'm, go ahead. I'm wearing a pin today that says, Still I Rise. Um, Recently, I lost my uh, my mentor um, and my PhD supervisor um, a few weeks ago in the service for yesterday. Thank you. And um, it's been a bit tough, um, but I just wanted to take a moment to just acknowledge her mentorship and how much it has meant to me um, in my development, even as a doctoral student, as a researcher, as an academic. Um, she has made such a profound impact on my life. And we've frequently spoken in her office about 
empowering others. It's like, okay, once we get into these positions, that's all great, but it's not fun when it's like a lonely experience. We have to ensure that we are dedicated to also preparing people who are hungry, not just preparing anybody, but preparing people who are hungry to also lift them up and to get more of us because I think we operate from, and I'm, I don't mean to make a generalization, but it seems that human behavior is kind of like, if I give you space into this top position I have, I have a potential, you know, have the potential of being kicked out of this space and then you could get it. It's kind of like that fixed mindset versus the growth mindset of thinking of abundance and that there's room really for all of us to do well. And so we frequently have spoken with that and certain things have happened recently that has actually led me to starting the nonprofit Moguls Worldwide. And it's actually the initials of Moguls Worldwide, MW, is named after my professor, Professor Marcia Worrell. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to thank her and, and that's you know why she's a big reason why I went ahead and launched it and um, I had a big event uh, planned uh, before this uh, coronavirus happened with a major company out here but that's been postponed so when that comes back I will definitely share that on the platform I hope you guys stay tuned to it and uh, I just want to thank you so much for having me on here today I really definitely do appreciate it. I enjoyed the conversation we should do more of these conversations and yes. then I need to get more feedback I it's the saddest thing ever. Yeah. I went to, I went to, there's a high school that my mm. sister went to, which is mm. two blocks, not even two blocks, one block mm. from mm. where I'm sitting right now. Okay. Believe it or not, they don't have a, a counselor mm. to help the students mm. get into any type of business. Wow. When I went and I inquired about, you know, speaking at, with the, with the class, mm -hmm. with the graduating class, mm -hmm pretty much offering myself for free. Like, I was like, listen, wow. I come and I do the talk. I'm yeah. only two blocks. Let right. me know if any of them want to become business owners. I can mm -hmm. give them some points. And if I mm -hmm. need to do an internship, whatever, it's available. It's non-paid internship, mm -hmm. but they're going to learn from the best of the best. Mm -hmm. I had such a hard time getting in there and mm -hmm. finding the right person. And then when I did find the person, mm -hmm. it was like one of the, it was like one of the moments where I was like, I was speechless. And if anybody knows me, I, 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 I don't get like that. Yeah. But then she said, the person who was in charge retired mm -hmm. five years ago. We have not replaced her. Wow. Did so that position, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Past five years, mm -hmm. students have been graduating without having zero mentorship on where to go to open a business, entrepreneurship, right. any of that stuff. They're mm -hmm. just giving some uh, list of classes. Take units, mm -hmm. let's get you out of our high school, and then mm -hmm. you go into the world, and let's mm -hmm. see what happens in college. Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. me, it's like, I don't want to impact the world. I mm -hmm. think I should impact my neighborhood first. Because yeah. for me wanting to impact the world, that's just too big for me. Right. I, I, don't, I can't see it. Because... Mm -hmm. People are hurting a block from my house. This is why mm -hmm. I live. This is probably the community I'm going to live in for the next mm -hmm. 20, 30, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And this is our future. Yeah. So to me, it's like, that's what everybody should be doing. Yeah. We shouldn't be thinking globally, nationwide, or even statewide. We should mm -hmm. be thinking our own neighborhood. Yeah. If we do our own neighborhood, little by little, it will have that domino effect. But it's so sad that they don't have anything. And then they wonder why these kids come out and they're not an entrepreneur. They're not making good money. They don't live in a good neighborhood. All of these different things. Well, they didn't have any guidance. So to me, it's like, we definitely got to work on that. Anyhow, I think we lost you again. Did we, did we lose you? Dr. Britton? If I can get her back. Okay, give me a second, you guys. Let me bring her back. One second. Dr. Brittany, I just invited you back. Cool, cool, cool. I think we're having Instagrams going. I think we're bringing her back. Is that what happened? Yeah, I think we're having Instagram problems. Let me remove her one more time. Let me add you one more time again. Let's see if that works. 
She might be having. I there we go. We got, so right, we got you back. We got you back. You're good. You're good. You're good. We got you back. We got. I was just telling we should fix our neighborhood first. Yes. Yeah, we should. We should. And, you know, to speak to that point, there's actually um, Mayor Rasparaka. He's the mayor of the city of Newark in New Jersey, the state of New Jersey. And at the time when I was working at Panasonic, I used to be with, um, we, the headquarters used to be in Secaucus and they moved to Newark. So now Panasonic Corporation of North America is based out of Newark, New Jersey, their headquarters. And I thought it was such a great initiative for the mayor to make sure that any- Oops, we lost it. We'll get it back, give me a second. I got you, I got it. Give it a second, you guys. I think we're getting it back. There we go. Try again. I guess we're having an Instagram challenge. Let's see if that works. I'm about to add you one more time. There we go. All right, you guys, we're going to get it on the next one. I think that we had some challenges. All right, you guys, we'll be right back.